Hello everyone, this is John with John Monarchic Fine Art, welcoming you to another Elkid oil painting video. Today we are going to do a painting that has a lot of mess ups in it. Um, this painting took probably another 15 minutes maybe, longer than a previous one I did. Uh, there are just a lot of errors that uh, I correct have to correct as I go. And one of the things I want to do in my videos, and I've always kind of said this, is I want to show you the real painting process, not just an edited version where everything is perfect, because rarely is everything perfect in a painting or anything for that matter. So here I am, not too much of a thought in my head, just a big two-inch brush on a little, well, not little, but a 9 by 12 uh, canvas. Actually, no, this is hardwood, I'm sorry. This is uh, an ampersand. Uh, gesso board, a one and a half inch cradle. You can see a little bit on the right. And the sky is the first thing to go. It started just getting muddy. And I said, you know, that don't look good. So I just wiped it off with a shop towel. If you're ever going to use wipe offs, which I do on a somewhat regular basis, you're better off getting the shop towels from like Walmart or Meyer. They're the blue towels. Um, they don't uh, shed and you're not going to have lint. Once in a while, I'll use a regular paper towel if I get lazy. But uh, most of the time, I try to use those. Okay, so now I went not all the way down to the white of the uh, gesso board because it's staining colors. But I'm using a little bit of cerulean blue and, you know, a little bit of the background is still um, mixed in there a little bit. So it's going to give me a nice kind of a grayish, bluish sky color, which I kind of enjoyed. I liked it. Um, one of the things that I enjoy doing and you know this is, you know, since for watching my videos, is I'm getting out of the habit of sketching first. And I'm trying to just create as I go along. And sometimes it's a lot more difficult to execute a successful painting, but so far I find it a little more satisfying. Actually, a lot more satisfying. Because you're really creating from scratch. You're just kind of going by how you feel and what you see, and in my case, what music I'm listening to. And you're going to, you know, basically create something beautiful or it's going to look like garbage and then you're going to wipe it all off, let it dry, and then start all over again, which isn't a bad thing either. So here is my clouds, which I've really gotten to be enjoy doing the carefree clouds. You know, I'm putting it in with a palette knife or in that case you saw a fan brush and I'm kind of just throwing the color around. And then I'm going to take a big two-inch bristle brush. And this is a bristle brush I got from Ace Hardware, I think. It's not a chip brush. It's a decent brush, maybe eight to ten bucks. And I know it looks like I'm hitting it harder, but I'm not. I'm, I'm basically touching it just firm enough to move the color that's on top of the sky for the clouds. I'm not actually doing it hard enough to blend. Sometimes I will in a couple areas, but overall... Um, I'm just trying to move the color to get the shapes that I'm looking for and the effects that I'm looking for. I have a very similar process that I do for the um, for my water too, whether it's rivers or ponds or whatever the case may be. And it's a style that I really enjoy. And I wanted just a little bit more of the dark, so that's Payne's Gray that I'm putting in. Now this one I'm blending a little bit just to get it inside. I didn't want to necessarily make that a cloud. I wanted that part of the sky color itself. So that's what you do. Okay, now I'm going to put in some trees because, like I said, I'm not really sure what's going on, but I know that I'm going to have some kind of trees over here. And I wasn't sure exactly where I was going for most of the painting. You know, maybe I got, I don't know, halfway done, and then it started really coming together for me. Like I said, this one, for some reason, I struggled with. I did two paintings today. I took a day off of work. This is uh, Monday, the uh, 19th of September. And I had uh, taken a PTO day today. And with the sole purpose, I wanted to paint. And I just wanted to get a video, maybe two done, and um, really have a nice painting day. My wife was at work, so I'm just going to be me and my music CDs and go at it. And uh, I did get two videos done. I'm not going to post them both tonight, but I did get two done. They're both 9 by 12s but uh, I had a great time. But the first one I did, this is the second one. I'm starting with the second one to post them. This one took, 
I don't want to say twice as long, but significantly longer than the first one I did. Both 9x12s, both gesso board, both the Elkid oil paint, everything. The first one I did, for some reason, flowed, and this one was a struggle the whole way. And I don't understand why it happens, but every so often you get a painting that flows, and every so often you get a painting that really fights you every bit of the way. Okay, one of the things I got here is a little bit of olive green, but what I did with it is I put very little on the brush, and I wanted to make these kind of recede a little bit. I wanted the tree shapes, but I didn't want them pronounced. I'm going to basically have those in the back, and then I'll have the uh, foreground, not foreground, but I'll have uh, more pronounced foliage in front of it. Um, but I wanted to get it like the illusion of depth with a forest and having some stuff in the back. And then uh, here I was putting in the branches and the trunks and stuff, and now I'm just making, you know, more twigs and grasslands and whatever the case may be. And having basically a good time. Like I said, this one was a struggle, but I still love painting. Even, you know, I'd rather struggle with a painting than do a lot of things without a struggle. So I just enjoy the process. Sometimes if it's too much of a struggle, I'll put it away for a little while, but most of the time I'll punch through it and see how it looks. Like I said, the worst thing that happens is it looks like garbage, and then before it dries, I'll wipe it all off, get down to as close as I can to the base of whatever I'm painting on, and at that point in time, once it dries, brand new surface to paint on, go from there. Okay, so if you could see a little bit now, I'm not covering all of it, probably most of it, but not all of it. So I'm leaving a little bit of area of those trees that I tapped in earlier that were that faint olive green. And like I said, that's just to give the idea of, you know, maybe a dense forest that's going further back. And that's kind of, you know, how I like to do forest. Um, not always, but sometimes. And then other times I did a painting, the one earlier today, that did go good. Now that one I have a little bit of, I don't want to say glow, but a little bit of a, maybe like an oxide red behind it that's a little cool and a little odd that I decided to leave in. So at that point in time, I just said, you know, the heck with it. I kind of like it. It's different. Some people are going to like it. Some are going to say, what the heck is that? But in art, that's not a bad thing to have people say, what the heck is that? At least they're talking about it. Okay. Now, one of the things that I haven't mentioned a lot is brush strokes. And if you notice when I do my videos, I'll do the brush strokes. Like this is the two inch bristle brush, a little cheap, cheap uh, chip brush. Say that fast five times. And I go through these things pretty good. I have to replace them on a regular basis because they are so cheap, but they're also cheap in dollar wise. I think that's like, you know, 250 a piece or something. So it'll last me, you know, a dozen paintings, maybe a couple of dozen paintings, depending on how I use them. But you use, like you saw there, I was using the side of the bristles going back and forth. As you saw when I tapped in the um, olive green background trees, I tapped it instead of using brush strokes. And then other times I will use it like a paintbrush, like you're painting, you know, a wall in your house and use it the way the bristles were. But when you're an artist, you utilize and manipulate each brush to whatever effect you're looking for. So right now I was looking to put in the ground, the mid-ground and then the foreground, but I didn't want it opaque yet, okay? Because you can see through it. It's a little transparent. And the reason for that is I'm not sure where I'm going with it. Now, I wanted to cover the white of the gesso board, but I didn't want to commit to anything yet. So I've got a couple of nice colors down there for the uh, underpainting. And that gives me time to just figure out what I'm doing as I'm putting in this river. And I'm putting in not pronounced waterfalls, but little ones. And I'm going to actually put in a few rocks. And I didn't have that in mind at all. It just, again, as the painting developed, that's what kind of came to my mind. And I know it's I sound like a broken record or a little flaky even, but I love kind of creating on the fly. I don't like having everything exactly laid out ahead of time 
to where it's almost like you're just filling in a paint by number set you buy at Hobby Lobby. And that's a lot of the fun that I have of creating. You know, a lot of it is the mistakes. You know, God bless him, the uh, late, great Bob Ross. I don't do uh, his style of painting, okay, as far as, you know, I tap in trees similar to his a little bit. But um, overall, I don't do the Bob Ross painting technique. But I do love his attitude to where he likes to just create he doesn't really sketch a lot. He just kind of shoots from the hip, as it were. And that really appeals to me as far as the style. And I've mentioned this artist a couple of times, actually more than a couple. Stuart Davies has been a pretty good influence on me as far as not what he paints, but how he paints and his attitude. Um, like I said, he's a tonalist painter, mainly, it looks like. And... I'm not that type of an artist at all, but the way he starts a painting and the way he goes free and it's just his attitude that I really am drawn to. And um, I've learned a lot from Stuart Davies. And then there's another person that I'm watching uh, on YouTube as well, Dennis Sheehan. And he has a similar technique. He's probably a little... He's probably Stuart Davies on steroids. He... Uh, really goes after just throwing color onto his surface and then seeing what shapes kind of pop out. And that's what I'm starting to gravitate towards a lot more. If you've been watching my videos, the last several videos, I haven't had a sketch. I've kind of just mixed a couple of colors that I thought were kind of cool looking and then put in a horizon line and kind of went from there. Sometimes they're home runs, sometimes they're, you know, maybe a double, you know. And if it's really bad, then I'm not going to keep it. But so far, so far, thank God, I haven't had anything that I consider really bad. So it's working out pretty good. And granted, I just started using that style, so it's the type of thing where, you know, I have to learn how to control it so it's not totally nuts. But it is fun because you really, you really feel like you're creating when um, you paint in that style, and I really do enjoy it. Okay, now here I am just throwing down color that I don't want too pronounced because it's my midground. Okay, pronounced will be more in the foreground. And I'm just trying to fill it in, and I want some, you know, some interesting colors, some interesting shapes, but I want the colors a little subdued. Okay, I'll have it a little more defined in the foreground here on the bottom and then towards the left, uh, to the right, I'm sorry, of the river. And the trees, I'm going to make them a little darker before this is over, but not tremendously. Not tremendously. You know, this is going to be a very subtle painting in many ways. And uh, it's not going to have anything really in your face bright. It's going to have flowers like I do in most of my paintings. I absolutely love wildflowers. And I put them in many paintings. I don't put them in as many paintings as I put in water in paintings, but I do put them in quite a bit. I probably put flowers in second most of any element that I put into uh, my work. Okay, now what I did here was I started using a palette knife and I didn't like it. So that's like if you're paying attention, that's like the third or fourth thing that I started and didn't like and then changed in mid-form. And what I did was I've got a little bit of a slope, as you can see, from the top right towards the bottom left of the river. And now I'm putting in, believe it or not, that's just Payne's Gray. And what I'm doing is I'm hitting it hard enough. It doesn't look like it, but I'm hitting it hard enough to where it blends a little bit with the olive green and the lemon yellow and the raw sienna that is the underpainting, you know, of the slopes, let's say. So I'm blending it in to give it a real subdued, darker green. And that, my friends, is how you can manipulate colors to kind of give you some nice variations. So now it doesn't look all the same. It's got a little different with slopes, a little different with colors, a little different with values. And it starts to look a little bit more realistic. Okay, now this foreground, I'm just going to fill in now. 
So you can see right now the part that is still relatively transparent, and then the very bottom where I started uh, tapping in grasses and stuff. And it was a little darker than I wanted, so now I'm going with a little bit more lemon yellow to the mixture. And it still is olive green and lemon yellow, just a little bit more of the yellow, because I want it a little bit brighter. And then right about now is when it's coming into my head. You know something? If I have a few rocks like I do in the river itself, that's not going to be the only place there are rocks. So I decided I'm going to put some bigger rock formations right there in that uh, bottom right corner of the foreground as soon as I tap in my flowers. And again, these flowers aren't going to be bright in your face, but it's going to be there to give you that nice little color and that nice little pretty that, you know, Mother Nature gives us on a regular basis. I'm just using the same two-inch brush. I'm just using the corner. I'm tapping into lizard and crimson and a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of raw sienna to dull it just a touch. I don't want it in your face completely. And one of the things that, if you've watched my videos, you might have noticed is when I put flowers in, usually I'll tap in like you see here on the ground. Because most of the time when flowers are blooming throughout the spring and summer, they're going to lose their leaves as they go a little bit and then grow new ones and those leaves end up on the ground before they kind of decompose and turn into fertilizer so i like to put those on you know like they're falling and stuff and there you just saw i scraped off some area of the uh corner that's because that's where the rocks are going to be and it's basically the reason i did that is just easier to put paint over a little drier surface than over thicker paint you just get a better coverage and that's what I wanted to do. And I'm just putting, this is uh, Burnt Umber and Payne's Gray. It's a nice dark mixture. And I'm not going to make it completely, you know, black. But it is going to be pretty dark. And right now I'm just kind of refining the shape. And again, this is part of the creative process. I'm just putting on the color until I get the shape that is pleasing to my eye. And once I find that, then I'm good to go. And I'm good to go. Now, one of the things I learned is I'm going to put in the grasses around these rocks before I put in the highlights. Because I used to put in the highlights, and then when I put in the grass to kind of ground, I would say, the rocks into the landscape itself, I'd always mess up the highlight and have to redo it again anyway. So right now I'm in the middle of washing my brush, and now I'm going to, I think I'm going to take a fan brush here, Oh, no, I did it backwards again today. I'm putting in the uh, highlight first. I thought I learned my lesson. Apparently, I didn't. Actually, my final highlight, I do do that. Right now, I'm just getting an idea shape-wise of where I want everything. And that's why I'm using the fan brush. I end up using the knife to uh, finish them off. And this painting is almost done. And like I said, it's a lot longer than it should have been. But... I wanted to show you that I've been painting for a very, very long time. And, you know, I'm no Thomas Kincaid, but, you know, my paintings do very well at my art shows and stuff like that. And it doesn't matter how much experience you have. You're going to have problems executing a painting on a regular basis. You're very rarely going to have a painting that just flows from start to finish without any issues. And... I don't like hiding that because as you're learning to paint, you need to know the obstacles that would be in front of you. And one of them is nothing is perfect. You're going to struggle with stuff at times. Maybe not a whole painting, but you're going to struggle with parts of it. You know, I didn't struggle with everything in the painting, but parts of it. And it's just the type of thing where you take your time, you look at what's appealing to you, and that's what you go with. You know, I had a couple artists tell me over the years of my learning that just because you don't like your painting doesn't mean somebody else won't. And that's kind of a, it's a fine line you got to walk because there's paintings I don't like, but they're at least schematically correct. Meaning they are correct with perspective. The values are pretty good. The colors are pretty good. All those things. So 
The whole composition itself may not appeal to me, but it's schematically it's correct. And as long as it's correct that way, somebody else may like it. So the whole trick as you go on your journey is be consistent with executing a schematically correct work of art. And even if you don't like everything that's there, at least it is correct. And that's what's hard for a lot of people that are new at painting to kind of understand. And this is what I wanted to do here. I just wanted to put in some little bushes and shrubs and stuff, not flowers, because I didn't want it too bright. I'm putting in, you know, a little bit of reds and stuff to dull it a little bit because the yellow was a little bit too much. But, because like I said, I wanted this to be a subdued painting. I didn't want it to be, you know, completely in your face. You know, even what I'm doing here, I've got this lemon yellow, but instead of tapping it real lightly and letting the yellow show through, I'm tapping it a little harder and blending it and then using some darker olive green after it. And then this is just straight raw sienna that I'm using to kind of give it a little bit more of a variety. Like I said, this painting I struggled with immensely. I'm reasonably happy with the way it turned out. Okay, it's not my favorite painting, but I've also don't have many favorite paintings of mine. I've got maybe two or three out of, the, let's say, 50 I have that I think to myself, you know, those are really good for my taste. You know, most of the time, I don't think artists really like their work as much as other people do. We don't hate our work, but we're always kind of our biggest critics, and that's not always a good thing. So anyways, there is the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit that little notification bell. And uh, I hope everybody has a great day.